Welcome to Detox with Dina and Friends. I'm your host, Dina Theodora, singer, songwriter, and actor. My aim for this podcast is to empower, motivate, and inspire you. Thank you to Vasanti Cosmetics for sponsoring this episode. Head over to VasantiCosmetics.ca for luxury, high-performance cosmetics and skincare. Make sure to use promo code DINA10 for 10% off all online products. I want to welcome today entrepreneur, domestic violence survivor, and founder of Rosé Toronto, Miss Yelda Shetty. Hello, sweetie. <laughs> I'm so happy to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you for joining. This was really just something that I wanted to do for a long time, and I'm so happy that we met, actually not too long ago, and um, I'm so happy that you uh, took, uh, took up on the offer. So before we get started, I just want to give a major uh, congratulations to your company and yeah. everything that you do. Do you want to introduce to our viewers and listeners what it is that, just a little background on yourself, anything that you want everyone to know and how you started the business and how mm -hmm. it saved your life and uh, journey towards Rosé. So my name is Yalta Shaggy and I'm the founder of Rosé Toronto. Um, basically in 2017, um, I decided to start an Instagram and I ended up making a face oil and it was kind of like a hobby at first but um, yeah it turned out to be a business. So that was something that you really just you were just drawn to and it just came about and so I mean does anything that I said, was it all correct in, in, in the right order that you moved yeah. from foster home to foster home? Yeah, so um, I think when I, my first time in a foster home, I was six, and then I, I got taken back to um, my mother. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, as a little girl, you wanna be with your mom, um, but unfortunately, when I was like 11, I was taken back into care, mm -hmm. and I remained in care till I was about actually on my 16th birthday, I decided, like, it was actually pretty funny because the cops came to my um, my work. What? Yeah, really? they didn't want to be in my foster home and I knew the law. So no, like, what was the law, tell me. So the law is that when you're 16, you can decide to like be on your own. You can em emancipate yourself. Mm. So basically, um, I just didn't go home and they came to my work and they were like, we're going to take you back to your foster home. And I was like, actually, I'm 16. I'm not going. You just knew right then and there. And yeah, so I looked it up, the law. Yeah. You smarty then. You yeah. just knew what you wanted. So you weren't happy in the foster home. No. You weren't happy at home with your mom. No. Um, and you were in many relationships at that time. Um, so basically, um, I actually didn't really have time for relationships mm. when I was that age. I, I homeschooled myself. Um, I worked full time when I was 16. Wow. What, yeah. was, what were you working doing? I worked at Mark's Work Warehouse. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm no shame in that. Everyone's got to start. No, it was great. I loved it. I would sell like work shoes. I would kill it. Like I was a great salesperson. Good for you. And actually, I was not supposed to have the job. Sorry, Mark's Work Warehouse. I lied about my age. <laughs> So I said I was 16 when I was 15, so I could save enough money to get a basement apartment. You go, girl. You gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> yeah, That's amazing. You were just like a young, work, hardworking, hustling girl. You yeah. just knew what you had to do. Yeah. What? So, I mean, in terms of rosé and everything mm -hmm. that you were involved in at the time, did that just did that dawn on you, and how did it come about? So, um, well, I was in the legal profession and um, I was in a very abusive relationship mm. and it got to the point where I would go to work and I was told that I wasn't taking care of my children, I was abandoning them because I wanted to work. So basically, I kind of wanted to be that wife that I was supposed to be, so I gave up my job and I helped my my ex start an HVAC company. Wow. Yeah, so I stayed at home, I started the company, and I went to school when my son was six months. So hold on, so from 16 yeah. to when did you have your first? I had my first when I was 25. Okay, yeah. so between 16 and 25, those years were quite uh, definitive for you. Yeah, it was, it was a wild ride. Wow. I, I worked like every type of job you can work. I, I sold cell phones. I was a landscaper. I worked at Tim Hortons. Wow. Yeah. I did a you lot did of it all just to get through. Yeah. And 
So at that point, you had your first, mm -hmm. and then what happened with? So I had my first, and I knew like just from the pregnancy and um, just taking care of my child, I knew I didn't have the support, and I began to get scared. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I have no family, um, especially in Canada. So I registered to school behind his back because oh, I wasn't okay. supposed to. Were you married, common law? No, we were common law. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I registered to school when my son was six months old. Wow. Yeah, so I was going to school. Max was six months, and then I got pregnant my last semester wow. with my second child. And I finished, like, I, I finished top of my class. I won an award. Congratulations. I studied on my iPhone. What did you take? I took paralegal program. Wow. And so this was something that, again, with the law, you really wanted to do. Yeah, I always was fighting for my rights, yeah. Oh <laughs> so my I, God. Yeah, no, I just wanted to help people. I've always loved helping people, and that's why I was yes. in personal injury. You know, I was helping people that were in a vulnerable position. Women especially sometimes are Absolutely, men even women. men. Um, just um, by the end of my legal career, I was working in a critical injury firm with people with brain injuries. Wow. And yeah, no, I just really enjoyed it, but it just wasn't for me. Good for you. So you found that out, and then at, at some at one point, um, you know, you were facing challenges. Can you tell me a little bit about what the challenges were and how they led up to Rosé? So um, basically, when I was staying at home, um, I was very depressed. Obviously, I was in a really horrible situation with this man. Mm -hmm. um, so I wasn't really feeling beautiful and good about myself. And I started an Instagram account. I know it's so shallow, but mm -hmm. I started an account just to kind of um, get some support and just be positive. So I'd post like my favorite products and um, I posted a face oil. I remember it. And everybody kept asking me, where did you get this? Where did you get this? I remember looking at the ingredients and being like, this is, they're lying. It says pure rosehip oil and it was like six different ingredients. Wow. So this like bothered me for a good two weeks. And I remember just being at the gym and I saw the bottle. Like I literally saw a black bottle and I started calling suppliers and I drew my label and I made a website. Wow. And you just knew the steps to take. Yeah. Yeah. to start your own line. Because of my past experiences, I used to work for an HVAC engineer. Yes. That's how I started the first business was from what I learned from my ex-boss. But yeah. my boss would always say, Google it. Anytime I'd ask him anything, but it taught me something that you can learn anything, anything you just want. Just by going online. Just go online. Everything. Just search World's it. at your fingertips. Yes. It is. You just so you just went look. online, you looked at I said, where fire. to buy organic oils <laughs> yeah and then just wholesale <laughs> can't leave the wholesaler yeah <laughs> wow so that and then that led up to you just creating your own logo your own yeah. everything and it just came together and yeah i registered the business and that's where the the issue started with the ex he he was very upset that i registered the business i was supposed to focus on the hvac company mm. so there was an event and um i ended up getting hurt there by him in what way he ended up hurting me like yeah my face oh no yeah and, and it was you... it was a public event yeah so i think at that moment i remember just being like i told the girl that came up to see if i was okay yeah i was like i think i got hurt and she was like you think <laughs> because i was so abused that and i she... thought it was okay like i thought i did something bad yeah oftentimes we feel like that yeah, yeah i would blame myself i'd be like this is my fault i must have misbehaved i was bad wow. so this is a big thing with abused women often they don't think they're being abused good point that you're touching yeah. on because it's yeah. a condition that they feel yeah. is on them and absolutely it was always i always felt like it was my fault what point did you realize that i realized it wasn't my fault that night actually i still thought it was my fault um, but uh, yeah, there was a situation at home that happened after, I'm not really gonna get into mm -hmm. it, um, where the only part I'll say is I was like, please be quiet, the kids are upstairs. Right. 
and he just didn't care. And my children are everything to me. So and you knew that's the I'm not staying because of you. I'm yeah. staying because I'm scared of you. I can get over that for my children. Now, did you have any kind of support from this individual at the time, or were you able to support yourself? And... Oh, I got no support. Yeah. So you literally had to just pack your bags. I had nothing. I left with no money. And you just... No child support. Still to this day, no child support. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, and so yeah. to have you as that, you know, as 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 a as, a, as an example mm -hmm. that you know you made it on your own. And yeah, I had help along the way from like really nice people. Of course, you know, I'm not gonna say I did it all by myself. You know, I had, I always say there's little angels that come into your life to help you through hard yes. times. Um, but yeah, a lot of the hard stuff I did by myself and wow. there was times where I was like, I can't do this. And you knew that you couldn't depend on anyone but yourself. Oh yeah, like all my friends disappeared when that happened. Um, I didn't have support from him or his family. I didn't have family, mm -hmm. so it was very hard. So speaking of relationships, mm -hmm. what, would you, what would your definition be then to a woman or girls watching mm -hmm. to a healthy relationship? If, if you can advise a girl for what's healthy and what are some red flags to watch from? I think what is healthy is when your partner is happy when you're happy. I think that's the most important thing. That's the biggest red flag. If the guy isn't happy when you're happy, it's not good. That you should be scared. Good point. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's easy to like take care of someone and make them dependent on you, especially like a, an abuser. They want to always help you, so you need them. Yes. But when you're doing well and they're not happy for you, that's a sign that you should probably yeah. run away. <laughs> and you know what? Good that you mentioned that because a lot of times, you know, we, women are, you know, vulnerable to Absolutely. being supported yeah. on many levels. Well, yeah. you trust your partner and yes. that's the thing. You trust to go to them for comfort and... What would you say if somebody uh, was being supported emotionally mm -hmm. but also financially? Yeah, so that's another thing. Women often stay because they don't they're dependent on the man. They put their trust into them, just like I did. Mm -hmm. I gave up my career. I started a career for this man, mm -hmm. and I literally was almost homeless in the middle of winter. But I got a job right away. I was doing rosé. My car was taken away from me. I was taking my kids on five different buses. Wow. It was awful. You just my made son was it. two, and the other one was four. You just made it through no matter what. I had to. Yeah. What a story. So for you, I mean, going back to, I mean, and I love talking on all these, you know, this is like really yeah. heartfelt for me, but I, I, and I thank you for sharing. Oh, no it's, problem. It's, it comes from a really heartfelt spot. What are your current projects right now? I mean, other, I mean, I know Rosé is at the forefront. Yeah. But what are, you know, so it's Rosé and then mm -hmm. there's Rosé Men. Yeah. Um, anything in the near future you want to tell me about? Um, well, we're coming out with a couple of other products, and then mm. I'm going to do a Yalta collection. Ooh. So it will be like Persian themed ingredients. Yes. Yeah. So. Amazing. Can you? Yeah. Oh, I forgot to ask what some of the, um, not ingredients, but what makes rose rose? So, what makes rose? That's a big question. Um, ah. So, rose, what makes it rose? It's funny because when I was making rose, I didn't realize why I love roses so much. But in Iran, that's like. There you go! Like, the biggest thing is roses. Rose petals. Yes. Rose petals, rose water. Like, growing up, that was. And you know, I, I didn't realize this, but apparently, essential oil, pure organic. Rose essential oil yeah. is one of the most expensive, expensive essential oils, depending on yeah. how much you can get from how many petals yeah. that That's very are expensive. one batch. So, wow, I couldn't realize. Like, it yeah. takes like something like hundreds of hundreds of petals to get just one drop of and that's why like there's so many products out there that say they're real rose and it's like and there's no way at that price you're giving a real rose that's it. so basically um i fell in love with rose hip oil because yes i had read about it so much and um rose the name rose came from me just liking champagne and roses. oh i love so I was like, roses, some... champagne, roses, rose, and then Toronto. Have, have a party with some rose and rose. Absolutely, there you go. yeah. Um, 
what do you, what's, what's some advice mm -hmm. for women getting involved in entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. um, specifically in, in wellness and beauty? Um, oh, I think entrepreneurship is over glorified. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I think a lot of people, um, it looks like you're just doing pictures on Instagram. It's a lot of work, but yeah. if you love it, you, you'll do great. If you, yes. if it's authentic, it has good intention, you know, you're putting a little piece of you in it. Mm. I think that's what makes a product successful. Wow. Because there's so many products out there, but you know, we're all individuals and have something special that we've like, you know, experienced or mm. whatever. And that's what makes products. Wow. wow. And to be so connected to it, you know, in mm. starting up the business and mm -hmm. it takes commitment. Absolutely. Um, I gave everything up for this business. Literally, I gave up my relationship, security, um, friends, you know, wow. um, family you, members. You, <laughs> you know what? You, yeah. you know, to where and, and to where you are today, you know, you just, you know, hats off. It's, it's quite Thank remarkable. You. Um, what's so one of your favorite, uh, so pr projects that, or charities that you're involved in, if any, yeah. um, other like, so your main, uh, you know, focus is Rosé. Yeah. So tell me a bit, you know, about what your main focus is with Rosé right now. I mean, yeah. other than the magazines that you were in, mm -hmm. that's uh, amazing. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, what, what, what would be your main focus? Mainly here? what my focus is, is developing the new products that we're coming out with. Yeah. Um, it's creating a good lifestyle brand, you know, mm -hmm. because Rosé grew from me wanting to feel good. So yes. basically creating these little nighttime rituals to like make you feel special. You know what I mean? Can you and give an example? Yeah. So <laughs> I'm just curious. So basically I, I have these rose court rollers and facial rollers because I wanted to give women a good good evening routine ritual like yeah relaxing. like a nice ritual like like our lives are so busy oh. we never take like the, that five seconds to just you give you routine. give yourself some love mm -hmm. like we're so hard on ourselves so Absolutely. creating different products that i use to alleviate my stress yeah and the rose actually do you find it helps to alleviate it does honestly like just even like having that second and just thinking about the cold rock on your face oh it's like distracting right they say when you're anxious to put like a little bit of cold water on your wrist well oh. this is the same thing you're putting something cold on your face i've heard it back of the neck helps but i'm gonna try that on your yeah. wrist yeah 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 are you involved in any kind of um giving back or charity yeah or so we um when we made hand sanitizer we gave about four thousand, which I love, of it to Cam H. Um, oh yes, tell me. My about friend um, Max Jamali, you know him. He, Hi Max. Hi Max. <laughs> he, um, we did an event together for them. And how far? How far back? It was probably back in like October, okay. I think, right after um, Toronto Fashion Week last year. Okay. Yeah, I think somewhere around there. Somewhere around yeah, there. we. Well, he's just always like including me in everything. So mm -hmm. he basically introduced me to them. And when COVID happened, they were the first people I thought of mm -hmm. to give back just because, you know, I do have anxiety di a disorder mm -hmm. and, you know, I've suffered through depression. My mother had a mental disorder. So it's something that I really care about. Good for you. And you know what, mm -hmm. that's so special to be able to give back because you feel so much weight is off of like absolutely you know, like you're giving back and you just feel that much um you know better by by helping others and knowing what you've been through yeah. um and it and to be able to help during covid yes yeah. that's, that's remarkable and honestly we're a small business so like it costed money to do that but it was very important for me to do it and so it was it was the small no group. we gave big ones yeah we gave big and small ones what was it filled with um, so we gave the lavender ones for them to take home wow. and it, it was cute because it said keeping you calm while you fight germs. Yeah. So we just oh, tried to do like little cute things to make people feel better. Good for you. Because I know that when COVID hit, everybody was so oh. anxious and of course me, I always think about everybody. So I was like, how can I help? So right? I was giving away, I made homemade 
hand sanitizer and was giving it away to my customers with all the packages. Wow. And then people started to like it. And then um, the our operations um, director of operations, Emma, what's up, Emma? Ah. Um, she was like, let's make a lot of it. And yes. we got into 26 different healthy planets. Yeah. Oh my God, congrats. That's amazing. What an achievement. Um, so just in, in closing, what are some of the hardest things that you have gone through with this entrepreneurial, um, you know, journey? And I mean, everything that comes from your success, if you want to share with the audience, mm -hmm. like some, something that you had to overcome and how you overcame it. How much time do you have? No, I'm kidding. Ah, <laughs> I'm kidding. All the time in the world. <laughs> um, oh, if there's one I think there's one thing that, um, is very hard and it's mm. separating myself personally from my business and knowing that you know whatever happens with this business it's it's not related to me and it's just or if I like say I get sued or yeah. if if whatever people are saying mean things on my Instagram because it does happen um, it's, it's it not a reflection of me it's just Absolutely. Sometimes Absolutely. people aren't happy for you and that's okay. That's okay because that's on them, like you said, exactly. and you know you and what Absolutely. your intentions are. I think that's like the hardest thing. To be I able think. to overcome I'm that. still learning, but of course. I'm getting better and better at dealing with that and handling it. That's yeah. an amazing point that you mentioned. If there's anything that you can go back and change, would there be something? No, or you're happy. You're you're content, like with where everything. I think happening. that everything that happens, even if it's bad, like it teaches you how to get through the next level of your life. It's like Nintendo, right? Yeah. I'm just kidding. Ding, ding. You know, all the levels, right? Yeah. Going to the next. But thing. it's true, right? You need certain skills yes. to get to the next step, or to Reaching. be able to handle the next step. I like that. Yeah. So the harder things get, sometimes it helps you achieve. Absolutely. It's not as like the first time I got sued, I was so mad. Second time I was like, oh, okay. See? Thanks. I was kind of used all to right. it. <laughs> it's, okay. it's all good. And then it just it's easier and easier, you know? Yeah. Like not not the suing part, but yeah. like I just mean like when bad things happen, the more they happen and if you know how to handle it, yes. it gets easier. It's still hurtful. Wow. But it doesn't burn as much. That is yeah. amazing. Now, I want people to be able to find you. Mm. So do you want to mention to our audience mm. and viewers where they can find you? Okay, you can find me on Instagram at rosetoronto.ca and our website is www.rosetoronto.ca and follow our men's account as well, Men by Rose Toronto. And yeah, that's where you can find us. And also, if you have any events or special promotions coming mm -hmm. up, um, I, which we can talk about, or we can have something to swipe up in stories when I do Absolutely. post. And yeah, we can give every, the audience a special discount oh, code. Oh, there we go. So you guys can all glow. Oh, the lovely Yelda today. And one last thing I want our viewers to be left with mm -hmm. by the amazing Yelda is, as we know, we come in this life with nothing and we leave with nothing. Mm -hmm. um, so what impact would you want to leave in terms of impact or major mark mm -hmm. would you want to leave behind? I think like for me, especially like with my brand, we always try to make everyone feel beautiful and there's like no definition of like a certain type of beautiful. I think that's what I really want to do is just make people feel beautiful and if I can do that uh, that's not for me what a beautiful mm -hmm. statement well with that I want to thank you Yelda thank for you the thank you for the opportunity of course I had to I mean thank after you. hearing everything that you're you amazing know, you, you great to host. Us, I had to have thank you so much thank you to Vasanti Cosmetics for sponsoring this episode head over to VasantiCosmetics.ca for luxury high performance cosmetics and skincare Make sure to use promo code DINA10 for 10% off all online products. Thanks again for joining in. Make sure to subscribe, like, share, and comment below. Make sure to also find us on Instagram, at Detox with Dina, and my personal page, at Dina Theodora. Stay tuned and catch you next time.